The COVID-19 pandemic isn't the only public health emergency facing the United States right now. America's opioid crisis is out of control, claiming a life every seven minutes. Over 81,000 Americans died last year from overdose. It claims as many lives as the worst 30 days of COVID-19 mortality. It has affected people from all walks of life. It has affected rich and poor, young and old, male, female, black, white, Latinx, Asian, from New Hampshire to Florida, Arizona to Louisiana, to Michigan, to Missouri, to the Carolinas. So how did this happen? The opioid crisis is the result of many social factors and the culmination of the negative consequences of the 50-year-old war on drugs, as well as the starkest example of punitive policies as barriers to prevent, reduce the harm of, treat or deter problematic drug use. It began to further accelerate in the mid-90s when the United States was experiencing a genuine issue with the undertreating of pain. But this change in policies was exploited by private interests and allowed them to aggressively push pain management solutions and incentivize doctors to overprescribe medical opioids. Ironically, most people who became addicted were not pain patients. And most pain patients did not become addicted, but were misused by other vulnerable and targeted groups around them, such as adolescents and young people. The global financial crisis of 2008 exacerbated a continuous trend in growing inequities within the United States, hardships that are also being revealed by the unequal impact of the COVID-19 crisis. The hardship increased the demand for legal and illegal drugs, with a rise in overdoses related to opioids and alcohol. Government crackdowns of the prescription practices with the hope that cutting the medical supply would solve the problem left many who were now addicted to medical opioids with no safe supply and limited treatment options within the healthcare system. The demand and supply grew for other illegal opioids such as street heroin and more recently fentanyl. The prohibition of drugs has created the perfect breeding ground for the rise of a dangerous illegal market across the United States. A market which is unregulated, run by organized criminal gangs, and is killing thousands across communities. To mitigate the current opioid crisis and slow its spread, there must now be a pragmatic reform of drug control policies. People aren't arrested for any other health condition. And it is now time to decriminalize the use and possession of drugs and instead provide a health and social response based on evidence. There are health services which are proven to reduce the harms of opioid use, including needle and syringe programs, which supply clean injecting equipment and stop the spread of bloodborne disease, such as hepatitis and HIV. Drug testing, allowing people to know what they're consuming. Safe spaces where people can use drugs under peer-based or medical supervision. The provision of naloxone, an opioid blocker, which reverses overdoses and keeps people alive. Now is the time for positive change in communities across America. It is time to save lives. It is time to protect public health. It is time to end the incarceration of nonviolent small-scale offenders. It is time to take legal responsibility in the control of drugs and off the hands of organized crime that benefits from addiction and regulates the current drug market.